Well, we lost a load of footage from the start of the uh, scraping in the 54 inch. Um, not all of it. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of an explanation with some uh, visual aids. So you'll remember I did a 24 inch, I had a 24 inch straight edge, which is good. Uh, it prints repeatably all over my 24 by 18 surface plane. So I know I've got one good surface plane, uh, surface straight edge. I then used the 24 inch plate to produce uh, a flat plane by step printing the 36 inch straight edge, which is to my best of my ability as good as I can get. And what we're trying to do is a 54 inch. Um, so theory would say straightforward, you print it and then when you got that bit flat you print that bit. However, when I started to examine the surface of the, uh, the straight edge, which measures 54 inches by three and a quarter inches, um, it occurred that the straight edge that I was trying to print it from was only two inches wide. So for all intents and purposes, to get a complete cover of that, it's four prints with overlap, which gives rise to some of its own problems. So I'll take you through the sequence uh, as it happened and I'll try and cut this up with the what bits of footage I've got left. Um, upon shifting all the rust from the surface of the straight edge there was some serious pitting left in the areas marked and that pitting was something in the region of 80 thou deep at its worst of the bits I could actually physically get a, a measure down. Um, there was in this area no evidence of scraping left and none in that area. This section, which is about just under half of it, uh, was pretty good. So it gives me the, leads me to the question of well, how far off straight is it? Because remember, I did, as well as just scraping this surface, I'd actually put some rust eater into these pits to take out the, the loose flaky bits of rust. Um, so... I then looked at doing a uh, just a, a really basic print. So I did a print there, so I brought it down, then lifted it up, did as much of an overhang, overhang as I could get onto the printed section, and then over the end of the thing and printed it there. And that's what I got, which was pretty much what I thought. So the area where the surface uh, scrape marks were gone was this. There was a little little bit of a bare spot around here. Shoo! The next stage was to decide how to go about attacking it. So if you're looking at the cross section of the straight edge, I've got pitting in this section and pitting in the middle. One option, which would have been based around taking the minimum amount of material away, would have been to take very little off this end and the maximum off this end. Um, which at the time seemed like a good plan. Um, I then decided that it was actually causing me all the problems trying to get the straight, trying to get a, a, a repeatable set of prints um, off the thing. Um, so I ended up taking a little bit more off the right hand side and for all intents and purposes it came down fairly level. Um, the 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 main problem area I'd got was uh, to make sure that I was crossing my hatches uh, in the direction. And remember, I'm trying to do this with the more pattern of scraping. Or as near as damn it. Um, I was turning the straight edge around end to end um, just to help. And what I found was as I was printing, the set because I'd got to leave the straight edge pivoting off the end point there. What I was getting was as I was moving it backwards and forwards, the straight edge was climbing over the area that I hadn't scraped much off, uh, which was giving me a headache. Um, so I ended up doing it in a series of steps. So basically taking it down, then taking that bit down, then coming back, taking that bit down and doing that. That seemed to give me a much more repeatable print. Um, so what I ended up with was for intents and purposes, this kind of setup, whereby I'd taken very little off the good end and had got this to the stage where I was getting a reasonable distribution 
um, and I've just got to bring in the last 18 inches. What I then um, concluded was, I, I well actually when I <laughs> I got I brought the end down and felt yeah oh, that's that's looking pretty good. I then went back over it, uh, cleaned it all off, cleaned off all the straight edges and everything, and then rechecked it with the 24 inch. And what I actually found was I'd got um, a hump in the middle of three quarters of a thou. So I'd actually taken the ends down more. Then I'd taken the middle down, um, and that led to me. Okay, <laughs> several things were tossed across the workshop. Let's just say uh, the next. So the next approach was having, having got it into a, to a reasonable plane, and I certainly didn't remove all of the pitting, but I got probably seventy percent of it out. Uh, I then went back to basics and dropped the middle down by thou, and then brought the ends down, or at least that was the plan. What actually happened was. I, because I'd lost faith in, faith in the 36 inch at this point, I went at it with a 24, brought the middle down, leaving myself two relative high spots at the end, and then brought them down like that. I then went back to the 36 inch and actually reproduced the print straight off. So I am actually confident that the 36 is all right, but I just wanted to remove any possibility of it not being. So what I ended up with was um, this kind of profile, which was a lot easier to address than one where I was work, trying to work on a hump where what the straight edge is trying to do is, is that. And you, you're talking about about half a thou drop and it's, you just can't feel it. So, I'm running out of bits of paper. Um, so that was roughing it in. Now, one consideration um, is that the, the straight edge I was printing or working on was 54 inches long, three and a quarter inches wide. What I was using to print it was 36 inches long and only uh, two inches wide. So I couldn't get a complete coverage. And what I was concerned about was making sure that when the straight edge went down, it didn't in any way tip or twist. So I ended up having to come up with a, a sequence of prints over through the cycles so that I didn't introduce any twist down, down the length of the, the straight edge. So initially it was overlap prints, so print it there, then print it basically there, and I'd got to allow a couple of inches past the end so that I didn't leave a hump on the end of there, and then come back print it on this side where the majority of it's supported by the already printed surface and then again there it was a fairly long drawn out process but as the distribution of the uh, contact points improved that printing process got a lot more consistent and my confidence improved um, and then finally I, I started doing diagonal prints so I would do a straight one in the middle like that then I would go diagonally there, diagonally there, diagonally there and there, just making sure each time that I'm coming past the end of the straight edge. Um, and that enabled me to refine the surface. So that's that was that sort of the, the overall uh, methodology of it. And, and as I say, um, I did have a lot more footage. I'll, cut in what I've got but um, the next job is to use the 54 inch to do a 70 inch um, and I'll probably work on what I've learned from this exercise thanks for watching well, I've lifted it up it's four foot six long it just fits on my uh, table surface uh, first job's clean off the crap uh, it's got pretty bad rusting so we have the joy of that one to uh, resolve. We'll have to see how deep it goes. Uh, I can't remember where he said this one came from. Um, all I can tell you is my back hurts when I lift it up. Hey ho.
Oh, well, this one's in a pretty shitty state, putting it politely. Um, I've basically just uh, used a rough stone, took the worst of the rust, rust off, or corrosion off, uh, it is rust. Um, and then I've done the same exercise with the Spirito de Levelo. Um, zeroing it out in the middle, what I'm getting is basically a 3 thou rise. Um, which isn't good. <laughs> Uh, so if you look at some of the pitting on it I mean, you can see that you big podger that's about 80 thou deep um, these are not in not in a million miles off that so I oh, that's a hell of a lot of scraping to get that out um, I mean if it was just three thou I'd got to take off that's a that's a chunk um, show I'm inclined not to bother with that one. Um, uh, what I really want is somebody that's got that machining capability and that can take off, probably take 10 thou off and see how it looked. Because uh, I don't mind the odd pit, but uh, yeah, that's that's the worst bit. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I watched Rob Renzetti, um, I think he put some silver solder into the bottom of uh, Tom Lipton's uh, uh, machinist level when he was scraping that um, mindful of not getting any heat distortion so with the, you know if it was really the pitting was uh, just localized in a small area I could do that but this is the best part of 30 percent of it um, but I do think with a, a skim over it it would probably come not a million miles off so I I could stick it up on the shaper and I don't know have it feeding left to right and and go 14 inches and another 14 and then another but I'm not convinced I could keep the whole thing square um, you might end up being even bleeding worse off than you currently are um, if it was only two foot I'd be a bit more inclined but given it's four it's a uh, a tall order. Well, I've got a really heavy stoning down because um, I think that the rusted surface, even though I cleaned off what I felt was the rust, um, anyway, I've cleaned it more um, and I've pulled out this uh, uh, steel straight edge and I've gone along it with a, a thou and a half feeler and I can just about ease it under in a couple of very small places um, and I've indexed it across that section which is where the uh, level sits and it's the same reading all the way along I can barely get a one and a half thou feeler to start uh, I'll then put a strong light behind it and I can't see any uh, daylight coming through Which would suggest it's all right. Well, I'll give it another hard, um, cleaned it off with a diamond stone lap and uh, cleaned it all down and then just dropped the uh, three foot straight edge on it with a lot of ink to protect the straight edge master. Um, and thankfully it's actually reproducing what I found in with the spirit level. So that's the first print. Um, so we're, we're, we're nice and hard on here, nice and hard here, not so much there. So that's got to go down and that's got to go down. I then indexed it across just to give me uh, a complete print. So it's 18 inches over. So for all intents and purposes, this section in the middle has been printed twice. But you can see there's a hell of a fade out there so there's no contact it's hard on there and a bit there which means that that's gonna go down so what i'm going to try and do now um and the, i only did uh about a half an inch movement backwards and forwards uh shuffling it across so that's where it started so some of the fade out here is because the ink's rubbed off uh so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a rough scrape all the way over 
and uh, then repeat the exercise. Um, the pitting in this area is actually, uh, come on, there we go, um, pretty grim. This um, The cast iron is stained from the corrosion, but uh, what I'm hoping is if I give it a good scrape over as a roughing scrape, and we'll see uh, what comes out. Now, because the thing is so long, I can't, unless I have the cameras hanging in the roof somewhere, I can't actually show you much. So I'm going to do a rough scrape and then I'll bring you back. That's the first snotty bit. That bit's not clever. And then the second bit. Right, well, I'm going to go over it now, um, just crossing my cuts so I'll be working that way down. I'll bring you back when I've done that like that there. So that's uh, pretty much duplicated the print that we had. So we've got a gap, gap in this section, a bit more here, another gap here. And we're not, we're not, uh, we've not I mean, we've, we've took off what it's probably a third of a thou, maybe a bit more. I can feel the ridges from the. Uh, Scrape him, maybe a thou. So, just going to keep doing that now. I want to get it down. So, I mean, this end is actually pretty good. There's no crap in it. Uh, that's where it's, it starts deteriorating from about a third in. But it's certainly usable. A bit of snotty around there. It's just this last what a third so sort of 16 inches 
So I want to take it all down till I start getting rid of some of this crap. And as I say, that's pretty damn deep. Right, well, I've been at it uh, half a day. Uh, what I've actually started doing now is I'm, I'm printing bang in the middle. So I'm going 18 inches either side. Because I've established that what, what it is is actually higher at the ends. Which is what the original um, assessment made. Um, so I'm basically print, printing in the middle. Um, you can just see it starting to show. So I just got to keep dropping the blues down until I get that middle bit that I'm happy with it. And then I'll print the last bit that way. Print the last bit that way. Um, and I'm going to sort of take it down to 15 points per inch then do a print each end and then take it down a little bit more and refine it well i'm pooped um building up a nice little stash of uh, shavings <laughs> mainly to keep them off the floor anyway uh you can see some scratches in it uh that's from stoning it off with a diamond lap it just takes it off a bit quicker it's uh I'll swap over to a fine uh, that one, that stone once we're actually within shouting distance. Hey ho! Well, we started at ten. It's now half three. So what's that? Five and a half hours. Uh, call it five hours. A bit of cocking about. Uh, so ridiculously heavy inking because um, I've just re-inked it and put a bit too much on the uh, master. Anyway. Um, so that's the three foot getting in. The uh, there's still some snot round the uh, centre section, and this top end here. And then obviously that's got to come in. Now I think I've done twenty low twenties, some like twenty two, twenty threes. Uh, cycles are roughing so if you think same on that end same on that end or possibly more so um yeah might have been quicker filing it or angle grinding it for that matter <laughs> anyway uh, i'm gonna go and have a bite to eat and then uh, come back and i'm gonna do a, a heavy scrape over that heavy blue got a bit bored doing straight scrapes Thought I'd mix it up with a bit of curling. That's only roughed at the end. It's certainly got an aesthetic appeal. Um, it's not for the OCD though. Or not not in my hands, I don't know if you see the little scratches. You, you got that kind of scratch from the tail of the curls versus a scratch where you go forwards or back you've got like little zeds run when you do it a uh, straight curl that's uh, straight scrape i've just knocked off the high spots from the last print so you can see it uh it's coming in the uh, the rusty areas a little bit crap still big old uh, but we're just going to do the same again but it really is lunchtime now oh, I'm reasonably happy that the uh, the central three foot is uh, flat arguably the points per inch could be improved but uh, what I want to do now is basically bring in the last six inches or seven inches on each end um, whether you can see that interestingly I've just been uh, emailed the uh, price for a new uh, six foot granite straight edge um which is uh <laughs> well 
six foot long, uh, six inches deep, uh, four inches wide, and it is 150 kilos and 1150 pounds plus that plus delivery. I don't think we'll be looking at that for much longer. Anyway, um, yeah, 150 kilos. I was trying to find something that would be a bit lighter weight than uh, the big heavy one I've got, but I'm guessing that's actually probably less than 150 kilos. I think I, <laughs> I don't think I weigh 150 kilos. Anyway, uh, so next job's to um, print the, the far end, doing the same as before. So we put the heel down in the middle, drop the far end down, and then scrape away the blues. So the tantalizing cup of tea at the end of the rainbow. So that is where the existing print finishes. So what I'm going to do now is pick up my straight edge. So that's the heel down in the middle, on at the far end. There's not an awful lot of ink on the straight edge. Hey, I'll take you up to the way. Should we use zoom? So you can see the uh, the inks picked up down the middle on this far side. This edge being a bit lower and there's sputtering. So just scrape that one off. Right, with a considerable amount of jiggery pokery and uh, cocking about with that spirit level, and what I've established is the is basically a, a 0.75 of a thou high in the middle, and it's very very smoothly done, <laughs> which is uh, annoying um, because I specifically printed the middle section and took it down to where I felt that the centre was lower than each end to avoid that. Um, evidently I didn't take it down enough or I took the ends down subsequently too much. Anyway, um, time for a break now. I'll come back and uh, give it three or four passes. I'm taking off around about two tenths on a pass. So shouldn't take an enormous amount of time hey ho well we've uh, took out a tenth out the middle just over um, basically that end is half a thou lower than the middle and that end is uh, point uh, basically two and a half tenths or 2.2 tenths uh, it's I'm taking it slowly because I don't want to cock it up too much. Uh, it's a pain in the ass trying to print it and then check it with a level. Um, because I don't want to scrape off too much and then end up having to redo the whole bleeding thing. So I'm bringing it down a little at a time. Right, well, I've uh, 
got it down to a reading of somewhere in the region of it's plus or minus a quarter of a division which is call it two tenths um, so what I've done is I've printed from that end to the middle by bringing the surface of the straight edge into that and pivoting it down so you can see it's printed the blank and then printed that bit and then I've done the same from the other end which I think quite clearly shows the ump in the middle now obviously there's a fade out um, but it's surprising how that's uh, as I say two tenths just over just over two tenths no just under two tenths so I'm going to work that down now all right well we've uh, got a decent print now from that end to the first red line and then we've gone from the center 18 inches and it's given us a, a relatively even print so now what I'm doing is basically bringing in the last bit so you can see that this area is higher than here so I take that blue off and take nothing past that line and then this it, the subsequent prints should progressively lengthen out until they hit this point uh, my guess is, is about a thou to come off and we've just set up an Instagram account under look creations very technical well, I lie we meaning my daughter who's uh, 13 <laughs> You're going to have to excuse the uh, poor framing up, but I can't get the camera any higher up. Um, I'm happy to call that good enough. Um, it's a pretty damn even distribution. And the only areas where it's below 25 points per inch are where there's a lot of rust uh, that I haven't been able to dig out for the depth, which is basically two areas, one there, and then... Uh, See if I can bring you over. Uh, this area here. And the only way I do it, get, getting past that, is to actually fill in the rust holes. And uh, I can't be asked. But for what I'm doing, where I basically want to be able to use this to, to make up that one, which is my six foot. And then that'll be the master. And I'll bring that surface into a uh, high dots per inch um basically using a smaller plate over it something like that parallel in fact i might even use that parallel so this is, is it basically needs to be flat end to end so that i can start getting some uh, registration marks on that other one take you for a fly past It ain't the prettiest to scrape him. Measuring the depth of the scrape marks, they're uh, between two and three tenths. So they're quite shallow, which does mean it will show up any signs of wear, <laughs> but it doesn't hold a lot of ink.
um, but bear in mind it's not a bearing surface it's a standard now I know that the likes of um, Richard King state you want something in the region of I think it's 35 points per inch and yeah if I was going to make this the final surface yeah I don't know, even know how you'd count that. 